Hey everyone, WonderBots here, and welcome back to some more Library of Ruina. Uh, people have been asking us to read the books, and I... We might go through some of these choice passages, maybe I'll do that on my own, but yeah, there's a lot of lore information. Unfortunately, this is a lot of reading. And I love lore. I, I think what is more manageable is that now that we are aware that this exists, we read them as we start defeating yeah. or acquiring the books for these characters going forward. Pretty much. Yeah, I think I will go back to some of these Just later. so that we understand some of the inner workings of the different factions and whatnot. Yeah, so r rather than going back and reading them, I'll, I might pick out a couple that are like, oh yeah, this was very relevant, but I'm not going to go too far out of my way for this. Oh, right. We got like... Did I finish building Son? No, I think I did. I think we, we got like a new person yesterday. Oh, Velasquez. They're new. I don't think I'm going to bother with them yet. Uh, we'll just see what we can do, and if I hit a roadblock, we'll go back. Uh, let's see, so we haven't started this one yet, so... Zvi and Book of Distortion. So this might actually be a little bit more... Main story? I don't know. All of them have been main story, but some are a little bit... Hello. Whoa, this is completely different. Are these the higher... Wait, Church, Church? of Gears. Church of Gears? I like it how she just has a cog attached to her head. Yeah, I don't even know where it's attached <laughs> to, considering. I, my headcanon is that it is, like, just bisecting part of her head and is somehow crucial for its workings. Ooh. But it's probably not the case. Ooh, that would be... Well, then. Salutations, everyone. Let us begin with today's worship session. It appears that we have a new worshipper. What concerns have brought you to our oratory? I don't think I can continue living in this city anymore. It's too much for me. What could have overwhelmed you so much? Everything is so dreary, and so is my life. I wake up at 6 in the morning, go to work by 8, and do the same work with the same face every single day. By the time I leave work, it's already 10 in the evening. I'm not sure what I'm doing anymore. I have so many expenses to cover every single month, I can't seem to get any richer. Everyone I see during my commute has the same face. I don't see why we work, why we earn money, or why we live. I feel like I've lost my goal, my purpose. Ooh. Unionize. This is, this is exactly the, you know, you, it should be like you, there's the, you work to live, but, or live to work. Yeah. And this is definitely feeling like you're living to work. Yep. Well, that there is no life. Yeah, this is the 995, except for it actually sounds worse. Because, yeah, what's that? 8 to 10? So that's 14-hour workdays? And, yeah, they, they're they a gear in the cog works. They're, yeah. they're just a part that can be expendable, replaced, and the machine just keeps churning out stuff for everyone on top, and the people that are actually making the product or whatever is making this place function, what are they getting out of this? Other than just endless days of labor where they... I, yeah. Yeah. I'm just like a cogwheel. Yeah, I really am. I'm living like a cog in the machine. Even if I were gone, the city would soon find another cog to replace me. Oh, well, mm-hmm. What am I? Where does my worth lie? I understand that feeling. Everyone in the city is like a gear spinning along with a purpose, or without a purpose. Staying in the middle of it wears you out. Slowly. You're right. I, I really feel like that. However, it is necessary. Is it necessarily a bad thing to be a gear? Huh? I mean, we are the Church of Gears Oratory. Why did you come here if not to be a gear? <laughs> Sorry, this is just like, uh, um, well. This is the oligarchy, apologia church. All problems stem from the refusal to admit the fact that we are indeed gears ourselves. Just accept it. I mean, like, really? I, I was just I, watching I was just a about thing to on say this. That. Uh, there's there's uh, a creator I, was, I have started watching recently has been going through uh, self-help YouTube channels and just ripping them to shreds and just, like, kind of breaking them down. And a was, number of those self-help channels just... What they're doing is they're trying to say, you can't change anything. Just recontextualize your own perception of the things sort to make of. it acceptable. And I hate of, that. This was more of kind of like weird uh, poor blaming where effectively it's like, you're poor because 
you're not a creator, you're a consumer. You're poor because you're spending things on creature comforts. You're poor because you can consume media as opposed to create it, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I do agree that creating things is a way for you to but to like progress. if everybody was a creator, there would be no consumers. You have right, to have right. a system have that to have is a... give or take. You can't just say only the creators get to win here because that just sucks for everybody else. That's why so many kids want to be, I think, Twitch uh, TikTokers now. It, was uh, it Twitch used streamers, to be YouTubers. And then it was YouTubers. And I think to some degree it's still people want to be influencers because it seems like influencers actually get to have nice lives. They it's, get to have, I suppose they they perceive that they get to have fun and that namely it's freedom that you aren't a cog. Though I would say the cogs in YouTube and social media are hidden and more insidious. Yeah, you have to guess your place and how fast you spin and how eh, it's its own problems. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it just seems like this church wants to encourage people to accept their position as gears. And replace their heads with robots where they can be repro reprogrammed easily. <laughs> I did too once. After my father passed away, I lost my way for a while. You see, my father lived his life akin to a gear wheel. He'd always wake up at the same hour, go to the same place, and come home at the same time with the same face. My father did research on gears. His goal was to solve the same type of problems that you're going through. Perhaps he unknowingly grew to resemble the single object he studied for so long. The wrinkles on his forehead deepened as he worked. They resembled the teeth of a gear. My father lived out his whole life as a rusted gear of the city, until he was murdered by someone else. Oh. And then, one day, I came across a thought. Maybe we really are gears that constitute the city. Maybe our suffering comes from trying to deny our own identity. But that kind of life is pointless. I'm tired of being a purposeless cog that keeps running day by day. Exactly. The problem is that you see yourself as an aimless gear. You mean that gears can have a purpose? Yes, of course they can. All we need to do is find the purpose that we are born to mesh with. You shall become a unique gear that cannot be replaced by any other. We are all gears. There are simply so many gears in this world, wallowing in sadness, for they have yet to know where and how to be. That's still hard to believe that. Take a look at all the people gathered here. Do they have the same faces as the ones that you've seen in your everyday life? No, they all look happy. Please, trust in me. Yes, this is the only way I have. Now, come up here. I will give you the purpose in life that you're looking for. Do I sit on this chair? Yes, take a seat and relax. This chair will tell you what kind of gear you are. Oh no, this is the sorter. Uh, It's, it's one of like it's the, the sorting, sorting devices. Hat, except for it lobotomizes you. Well, okay, so I've seen this in future utopian dystopia novels where they just assign people a role. Actually, that was also the plot of what? Uh, ants? Yeah. Where pretty much as soon as the little larva came out of the their shells, it was just, you're a worker, you're a soldier, you're this, yep. you're that. But, well then. Is this really safe? Of course it is. Oh my, you turned out to be a thought gear. A thought gear? It is exceedingly rare for one to be bestowed with the purpose of a thought gear, you see. They are helping, uh, they are helping me even now. For your information, my father was also a thought gear. That means those gears on the back of your head are... This one is my father. He always provides me with his wisdom about life. Whoa, 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 wait. They're not actually turning people into gears, are they? Uh, they might be. I... This is bizarre. This also reminds me of those old personality tests that you could take on computers in the late 90s, where they tried to tell you what career that you were to be sorted in. 
For me, it was art or science. And yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Besides, meat gears need to keep company with at least one thought gear. Wait, wait, am I really going to turn into a gear? Oh, wait, so is she considered a meat gear? And her father's a thought gear? Or what's going on? I suppose so, or at least that's her implication. The pain is only temporary. It will soon be followed with pure fulfillment. Everyone, let us welcome the honorable and invaluable arrival of a new thought gear. Wait, wait! I didn't know this would happen. As the gears turn. Are you sure you didn't cut off the sound effects for whatever there, horrible thing was happening? There was a little bit happening? of like a, a drill noise, but it was quiet. So too does Will life, life fulfill, fulfill its, its cycle. cycle. Oh gosh, is this a group that's going to try to eradicate them? Full stop them, fixer. Or? Full stop fixers. So, that's Eileen, the cult leader of the Church of Gears. I've seen all kinds of gears in my life, but thought gears are new to me. This must be the ru rumored ritual of theirs. They get smarter by plucking gears into the back of their heads, apparently. That's a load of horse shit. Alright, let's see. Director Eugen from She Association asked us to... Kill ten worshippers of the church, neutralize its leader, and secure her. I didn't quite expect the director of She Association Section 2 to personally give our officer a request. Something strange must be up. How long are we going to sit and watch that? Can't we start shooting now? Wait for my sign. Ah, what a beautiful thought gear you have become. I will give you the honor of accompanying me. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yep. She has a second gear now. You shall soon understand how happy it is to be a gear with a purpose. Yes, it may take some time to adjust. Let us start with turning, bit by bit. Good. Along with the others, gently rotate one cycle at a time. My father will gladly help you out. See? It does make you feel happy, doesn't it? I'm very glad to know that you are happy. My dear followers, today another lost gear has found its way to happiness. Praise be to Father. Praise, Praise be. be. Huh? What do you mean, be careful? Now. What? What's going on? The gears. The poor gears. Please don't do this. Whoever you are, please leave us alone. We simply wanted to live a happy life following our destined purposes. Gah, why is their slippery leader so hard to hit? This is Li Wang. Oh, it is Li Wei. Sorry. She doesn't seem to be dodging the bullets with her own reflexes. It's as if it's something else is predicting the trajectories for her. Maybe father. Those thought gears on her head are spinning like crazy. Damn it, this sucks. We paid an arm and a leg for these bullets. Li Wei is the guy Li Wei guy is the, the guy. Court. Sorry. It's yep. just the mixture of uh, Western names and Korean names is messing with me. Damaki, I think we can read the movement pattern of the. Uh, I think we can read the movement pattern of those gears. Can do. Uh, grazed her shoulder. I'll finish her off. Wait, who is Argalia? Are are they a protector of the church? I suppose so. A bullet crafted by Atelier Logic. Why, those are some expected expensive bullets you have there, don't you, friends? The blue reverberation. You are. Ah, could you be the person my father always talked about? Hmm, I guess. Say, I need you right now. Would you like to come with me? Yes, of course. I've been waiting for you my whole life. A perfect fit with the gear that is me. Why, thank you. Oh, no, you don't. But first, those friends need some attention. Pluto, could you look after Eileen in the meantime? Run. The hell is going on? Why would the blue reverberation be here? No idea. Damn it. Looks like 
he's trying to kill us. If we screw this job up, we're going to be bankrupt from all the bullets we've wasted. You literally just saw the blue reverberation deflect our bullets. We're no match for him in any way. Forget about anything else. We should run away and survive for now. We're almost to the exit. Hiya, friends. Who could have made such an adorable little request, I wonder? Ah, hell. To the left. Ah, ah. ah, you're not getting anywhere with your sluggish feet, don't you see? Unless a lifeline were to come down from the heavens, that is. No? Damn it. Maybe we should drop our guns. Are you nuts? These were hella expensive. We're never throwing them away. We can't hide forever either. Anyway, this is... What's that? An invitation? From the library or whatever. Heard the, heard that the Hana de designated it as an urban plague now. Wait, are they going to teleport out? Yep. They're going to the library to escape Argalia. Ah, look at you. All clustered together in a corner. You're like a flock of cute little chicks gathered around in the cold. Blue ver reverberation. We apologize if we interrupted your business. We promise to forget about anything we've seen and heard here. So could you let us go? What? <laughs> okay, under one condition. Can you tell me who gave you this request? Mm -hmm. I'll give you ten seconds. Nine. God, whatevs. Leeway, do something with the invitation thing. Six. Anyone got a pen? We need a, something to sign the paper with. Ah, oh, you can use mine. Take your time now. Four. Crazy bastard. Quick, sign your names here. Three. Now, the real show is only beginning. Wouldn't you agree? Whoa, what? Of course. Dang. Those look like the villains. Mm-hmm. The blue reverberation. That name sounds familiar to the Red Mist. You got that right. Both of them are top grade fixers that received a color from the Hana Association. They're a cut, a, they're a cut above grade one. It's curious that such a capable fixer showed up so early. There are lots of nutcases among fixers, but the Blue Reverberation is on a whole nother level. He's a certified lunatic. Is he famous? Oh, he is. He's certainly got skills, even if he's bonkers. He does appear to be skilled, seeing how he blocked those gunshots. That's why guns aren't used too often. They're not very effective against actually competent opponents. <laughs> oh, is this a Star Wars prequel trilogy logic <laughs> where it's yeah. just why use blasters against Jedi because, well... It's meaningless, yeah. Now that you mention it, the majority of guests we've had so far didn't carry firearms. Is there any other reason guns aren't used? It's the cost. They're awfully expensive. It's not just... It's just not worth it most of the time. Guns are pricey on their own, but bullets are plain ridiculous, like those poor folks said. Manufacturing bullets must be quite costly. That's true, of course. The biggest factor, though, is the tax the head levied on firearms. It depends on the gun, but two full magazines worth of bullets cost almost the same as a decent gun. Heck, giving your entire office crew augmentation procedures is probably cheaper than keeping enough bullets in stock for them to use. The cost is so high it outweighs the benefit by a metric ton, and it's hard to find a workshop that treats guns or bullets. What's more, workshops aren't even allowed to craft those without a firearms manufacturing license, which is apparently very tricky to get. What do you think is the reason firearms are made so inaccessible? This is just my hunch, but I... I think they don't want killings to happen too easily. Killing what? People in general. I didn't quite expect the rulers of the city to be humanitarians. Oh, not because the head in the city value human life or anything, obviously. It seems like they have this weird philosophy that the process of a human killing another shouldn't be trivial or insignificant. How funny. Death can be plenty insignificant, even without guns. Well, you aren't wrong there. Phew, he's not following us all the way here. It's as if some omniscient person is toying with us. The blue reverberation seemed like he knew everything. We should be thankful that we survived him somehow. Uh. Don't get too nervous, Stefan. How can I not be nervous? We ended up in the library. We know almost nothing about. You know we're almost out of bullets, right? 
Uh, what's the point of running away if the blue rever uh, from the blue reverb? If we're gonna die here anyway. Then we should at least try to die a little bit later, obviously. Humans all die eventually. There's little use in delaying the inevitable. See? He's got a point. Don't worry. I'll work it out. Greetings, dear guests. Hello, I'm Stefan. Soon to be dead and shoved into your bookcases. You don't quite appear to be so spirited, dear guest. It's ultimately up to you whether you become a book or return triumphantly with the ones you need. Yeah, thanks for the kind words. You're ruining our mood. Don't mind him. We're in a bit of a hurry right now. We'll just take care of the business here and go back. I understand. Various guests visit here with their own reasons and purpose. There have been much more impolite guests, so please do not worry about your attitude. I'm getting a bad feeling about this lady. She seems just as eerie as the blue reverb. Maybe just dying to the blue reverb is be a better idea than this. Tweet, 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 tweet. What are you, a parrot? Get inside already. Fine, hothead. May you find your book in this place. All right, so it looks like he's weak to pierce. And these two are weak, pretty hard to blunt. Which, what kind of damage do they do? Yeah, my one fear is my characters are pretty weak to pierce. And they do a lot of pierce. So we mm. shouldn't be using these guys. Let's take a look at him. Blunt slash, because we could try this group. Who is my, like, really good one? Because we have a lot of fire. I think we had these three as bleed. Yeah, it's tough. Because we kind of want, kind of want a broad spread here. I think, actually, this group does a decent amount of... Uh, but they do a decent amount of... It, we want somebody that is... Weak to blunt, if we've got anyone in that kind of lineup. I guess actually this group is resistant to pierce. Okay, I guess we'll go for bleed. We'll just see how this goes. Okay. Okay, melee page icon. Oh, melee is the more common type. When a melee character clashes against a range page, its offensive dice cannot damage the range opponent immediately, even if it wins a clash. However, the melee die will be retained upon winning a clash and moved to the end of the dice queue for reuse. This is why they had that whole section about ranged weapons versus yeah. physical weapons, is that this is that's kind of the introduction to this. So range will always be played before melee regardless of speed. Less common combat pages, the perform attacks at a distance. Even if the offensive die of a ranged loses in clash against the offensive die, doesn't take immediate damage, however, will be retained. Okay. Useful, mostly. Yeah, and the, does that mean that these are the first ranged characters that you've ever encountered? Yes. Mm. Okay. How are we doing this? Because they're doing, take the shot, 2 to 6, 2 to 6, and a 1 to 5, but they are ranged. If I just do gut harvesting... Then we can do an appetite. Are they all just aiming for her? They are. Mm -mm. Rude. Ooh, single use, on hit, too fragile, next scene. Ouch. Well, in that case, let's just have her eat that. And then preps so that we can do... Honestly, I think I'm just going to rip through Stefan if I can. Okay, so he's still aiming at her. And he's doing just kind of a much more... Oh, these two have guns. He's got some kind of melee. Mm. Okay, so 3 to 7, 2 to 5, 2 to 5. Not too much. So I'll just do gut harvesting. Let's see. She's still got appetite? Yeah. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, so this kind of worked out. Oh, right, I should turn quick mode off. Because I could barely tell what the heck was going on. There we go. 
Okay, so Stefan is shredded. Slash die, gain extra power, take extra stagger damage when slash does not connect. That's probably my best. I never like it when you select these because of the heartbeat sounds. Mm. Okay. Can I see pages? Who has the most amount of slash on them? Or by far? Oh, wow. Hmm? Oh, just Stefan, I believe, is staggered, right? Yeah, so he's staggered and bleeding pretty badly. Uh, let's see. I guess let's just see what they've got. So she's doing a shot, feeble, and then same deal as last time. Glad that he offers some more bleed effects. We've been looking for more. Well, I've been looking for more of those. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Let's just do a cooking prep. Take a bit of damage, but it's probably fine. And do we start ripping into him? She's weak to blunt. I guess this actually has some. And she's got the rude gun. Do you have anyone finishing Stefan off? Or is it going to be a bleed that he succumbs to? Uh, let's see. So he's got 13 bleed, but that only tr uh, bleed only triggers when you roll an offensive die. Mm -hmm. So what I'm probably going to do is just chuck appetite at him. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bleed or do I just do overpower? I have cooking prep. But yeah, appetite should be able to do enough damage that it just rips through him. Uh, let's see. Oh, right. It's one, two, and three. There we go. So now I can see who's aiming at what and where. So if I do gut harvesting, I believe I take... Yeah, I take the initiative. She's shooting, but there's not much I can do about it. Another appetite there. And I think that's good. Yeah, not perfect. Oh, wow. But it's messing him up pretty bad. And then... Uh, he was he was brought down to 15. Yeah, my goal to some degree is to just to uh, get it, uh, get him low enough that he just bleeds out. Mm -hmm. What do we have, Cocoon? If on hit, single die roll, if die roll, maximum value, one to do paralysis. That's okay. So we could also do a lured. I could do, let's do glitter. I think I'd used it on Hode. Oh, and they've got fragile. Could actually just rip through them. Wonder if I do, if I succeeded both of these, or if I have both of these. Okay, good. They have both of them. Whoa, that, is that the glitter sound effect? Yeah. So they've they've been, uh, they are now targeting Hode, and they're gonna do more damage. This might, uh, might be bad for Hode. What? What? Oh. They uh, removed a lot of their bleed, so I'm going to have to actually hit him again. Mm -hmm. Which is why I thought it would be better just to have finished him off. But... Yeah, I should have. I was being gutsy. Why is she glowing purple? Uh, they're, they're allured. Mm. Okay, let's just do something like that. I think we blocked it. Yes. Okay. His book is obtained. Yeah, so despite the fact that enemies gain a bonus against Hode, it was a lure gone? No, it's not. I don't think. I don't see the purple glow anymore, though. Yeah, I think it only triggers once. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess all we've got is cooking prep and appetite on her. I did use pretty much all of my good abilities, but that's fine. Because uh, there's not much left. I really dig the uh, 
the bleed kind of hairy build. Mm. I'll have to poke at it some more. It... Victory. Huh. What was that? Oh, there was just like a, a gear symbol un underneath with some Korean. Yeah, this. I don't think I'd ever like really processed that, but I guess that's probably true of all the previous ones. Oh, chance to boost slash damage by a plus one. A lot of people are telling me that these aren't worth it, but these actually seem pretty good. Okay. So uh, Book of Tamaki, the full stop office, Leeway, and then Stefan. Yep. Okay. That Stefan fellow turned into a book just like he expected. It's kind of sorry to see him keep railing at the world till the end. Do you think it's wrong to blame the world? Oh no, nothing wrong with that. It's not like I, I think he was weak-willed for putting the blame on this world for his for his miseries. It's just that I pity myself for living in that same world. I'm sorry that I keep trying not to fault this world. I curse this world. Same, to be honest. <laughs> that was fast. Just, huh? Yep, I agree. All right, let's burn some books. Uh, let's see. So people are also pointing out that... the gear ones are down below. Yeah, people are also pointing out that some of my, um, I didn't have a book show up. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm going to go through and burn a couple of these, even though, like, it gives me a decent amount. Say so it says, like, two out of two, zero out of three, six out of seven. Mm. I'm not actually sure what that means. I think it's just that you can only... Uh, maybe that's, there's only so many more present, or I don't, I don't know. You can only unlock one of those? Yeah, I think we might have also forgotten to burn these books the last time. Mm -hmm. I don't know, people are discussing it on Discord, but I, I don't think I'd like fully uh, paid attention to what they're saying. But it does seem like if, for example, I just burn a heck ton of these, uh, they all empty out to zero. So my my assumption here is that I just need to burn enough books uh, until all of these are zero, and then we've collected presumably all of the pages. Mm. I've just been relying on the fact that the game is just like, hey, you have infinite everything. That uh, I didn't think there was a possibility that I would get less. Yeah, I see. So they're start they're starting to gray out. Yeah. Then why do you have things that are three of three? Or unless that's there's three you can get, but you don't have any of them. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, again, the way mods combine with everything else probably is making it kind of funky. And this is probably the kind of thing that I should just do off camera. Mm -hmm. uh, just to guarantee. Oh, I forgot to do some general invitations between. It's been a busy week, and I got hooked on Guild Wars again. <laughs> I'll just own that. Mm-hmm. Here, can you just do the most okay. recent ones? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's take a look at them. Because I know the last group gave me a lot of bleed. So, can only use ranged combat pages. Ouch. And yeah, offensive die gain bonus power for the first scene. I don't know how much I care about a lot of these, but I do like their abilities. So inflict feeble, offensive die, die loses power. That's kind of good. Uh, let's see. Namely, I wanted to say the the dude. Ah. Oh no, they're probably just further down. Yeah, full stop to life. No. He had some bleed abilities. Ah, here it is. Yeah, beyond the shadow. Three to seven, then two to five, two to five, bleed on the next scene. Mm. Okay, so is that kind of all of them? It's either kind of all of them or enough. Uh, let's see. Oh, interesting. Book of the Full, full Stop actually has both Stefan and Tamaki's pages, potentially. I don't know. I think it's probably fine. I think we've any interesting lore books about them or not really? Yeah, it's an know. interesting question. Considering they were just hired to do this particular job, I don't know. Well, well this is about color. So this is actually important lore for later. So we might uh, as well have you read of this one. Because of Agalia being the blue reverberation? Yep. Okay. 
A color is the dream and lifetime goal of all fixers who wish for freedom. Those who have been assigned to color are called the colors. A color is the pride of the fixer and the associations. They put forward the colors as great and successful people that other fixers will look up to. They dream of earning wealth and fame and to be free like them one day. Colors are assigned by the HANA Association. They're bundled into such a category because... Here, give me a second. Yeah. The HANA deemed them, or HANA, deemed them to be the most ideal fixers because they're the most adequate individuals to deal with the stars of the city. The title of a color is forcibly given to fixers who qualify, essentially. Can a fixer be truly happy with freedom that was forcefully handed to them? Why colors of all terms? when there are other styles, oh, stylish words to choose from. I have no comment to make since I don't know the reason myself. My assumption is that colors are used because giving people hues represent, representative of them makes it easier to refer to and remember them by. It may not be the answer you were expecting, but it can't be helped. The colors have their own way of work, uh, ways of working, and they basically, and basically nothing in common. It's akin to how visible colors have their own vibrant characteristics. In that sense, the term colors isn't entirely off-putting. Huh, so freedom, fixers with freedom, are they just... Yeah, they're effectively superheroes mm. of the city. And mm -hmm. as such, they can do whatever. So I think this is just talking about bullets being expensive. And then Not guns. many workshops that can craft guns. Yeah. yeah the so head, head put heavy restrictions. Yeah. They don't want denizens to be harmed too easily. Uh, also, yeah, denizen doesn't have to show themselves, can fire from a distance. It's kind of the whole dishonorable combat, especially back when there were sword samurai and swordsmen. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, pistols and muskets were frowned upon in the early day because... It, it isn't personal anymore, and it also isn't about skill. I mean, there is yep. there is skill to being able to aim, but it isn't the same kind of skill required to wield a sword and have a back and forth of attacking, parrying, defending. You, you understand what I mean? Oh, yeah. Where is it? Crack of dawn. Uh, da, 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 da. I think it's why back in what was it? the late 90s or the early 2000s, there were all of the gun kata attempts at making gunfights more choreographed. Yeah. Because they wanted the feel of it being a a sword fight without there being swords. I think it's why fantasy still appeals to a lot of people. I mean, sure, you have people with bows, and crossbows, perhaps, but I, there is a romanticism to swords. Yeah. Think of all the legendary swords of history. Sometimes they, you know, in fantasy, they had magic or something else associated with them. They could cut through any other object or that they were ensorcelled in some way that they imbued its wielder with uh, greater speed or, or strength or things of that nature, but... I'm just looking at... Uh, uh, that's useful. Uh, I'm just looking at how this setup works because mm -hmm. uh, my my slashy bleed build actually has a bunch of like much better uh, cards pages that can actually be put into it I don't actually know if this is going to be uh, the ideal I think I need some page draw but I think draw is incredibly rare uh, let's see heck I don't even know if it's lit oh no page draw Yes, yeah, so we've got two. On use, draw a page. So reduce the power of opponent's next die. So that's actually kind of good. And then on hit, draw a page. I'll, I'll keep that in mind for a, a future run, but I think this will be fine. So if we go back to the library, uh, so we've got uh, anomalies for both Netzak and Yesod. Ooh. Book of Porcubus. Ooh. Porcubus. Oh, but it's cute. 
It was actually one of the easier ones to work with, but it also does have an Very insta kill. First, but the next step won't be difficult at all. Don't you want to feel the dazzling and vibrant display of colors? Wait, so you want to voice this one? No, not necessarily. It just popped up. Wait, some of their employees would wait their turn to visit this thing's containment was, all day? Yeah, so it was like kind of, uh, I think it's opium or something like that. Nothing is so ecstatic about seeing a line of headless corpses. That, wait, wait, are they in the background? The yeah. headless corpses? It looks like their heads have been half bitten off as opposed to fully bitten off. Though. Yeah, but it, it, it was like one of the ones that was like pretty easy to work with, but if you goofed it, your head would explode. Uh-huh. Okay, so... Thorns granting happiness. On hit, give the target two positive emotion coins. Fluttering, take no damage from ranged pages. At the start of each scene, characters restore one light for each page of pleasure in their hand. On hit, the target has three pages of pleasure. Deal 20 damage and exhaust those. All right. Mm. So I've completely forgotten about what this group was. Paralysis, seems Come like. under me, I'll liberate you from all kinds of pain. Yeah, I can definitely. Okay. This is definitely some kind of drug plant. And yes, it's red. It doesn't quite look like a poppy, though. Let's see. I do electric shock. So do you think it's called a porcubus because it's, you know, there's succubus, incubus, porcubus. I forget. Ugh. Woo. Okay. Yeah, my goal is to just... It makes little bell noises. It does make little bell noises. Ow. My goal is par paralysis. For the duration of the scene, whenever the character plays any combat page, up to three random die on it have their max roll reduced by three. Okay. Man, its lines are creepy. So pleasure. Ah. It's exhausted on use. So that's actually kind of useful. You must come to me explain something, haven't you? Just a little taste of heaven won't hurt, right? I pity those fools who don't know this happiness. Squiggle, squiggle. What do we have? Is that? Once you've had a taste of the sweetness, you can't quit. Tap on that. I, I just don't like the whole, like, feel free to pet me bit. And it's like, what? Ah. Okay, so you're free. Let's undo that, because that's slower. Perfect. I think this is perfect. I'm trying to think of why in particular plants produce chemicals that affect mammals and other creatures in this fashion. Because I know that there are ones that, yes, they make you sick, they make your eyes irritated, they taste terrible, and it's because they don't want you to eat them. And then I suppose there are things like fruits where they want you to eat them so that their seed gets spread through your feces elsewhere, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering for the psychedelic plants, is it to discombobulate? creatures and potentially kill them or is it a, again a thing to make them seek them out I don't know it, it seems like the hmm I didn't know paralyzed paralyzed could go pa uh, past four all right works for me yeah so I'm my entire strategy here is mostly just stunlock, stunlock Porcubus into next Tuesday. Uh, you know what? I might as well actually hit it with pleasure. Get rid of that page. So currently it's got Paralyzed, which mm. is reducing their... Um, their speed? Their potential roll. Oh. And so it's making it very difficult for Porcubus to hit me. That's it's good. still succeeding every once in a while, but it's... Um, the entire point of this thing is it's giving you pleasure pages. Uh, there we go. It is now stunned. Uh, so the more pleasure pages I have, 
Uh, it brings me closer to instant death, mm -hmm. effectively. Uh, let's see, which does more, five to 15. Yeah, one plant that I was reading about that was especially nefarious was a, it was a type of bramble that I think exists in England and Ireland and whatnot. And it definitely had a more colloquial name that made it sound much more threatening than it was. It, it was essentially the equivalent of sheep eater or something along those lines. Mm. But I, I don't know if it evolved in such a way that it was as thorny and entangling as it was specifically to catch sheep or if it was a situation where perhaps the thorns and the brambles were to deter animals from getting into it in the first place, but if it happens to catch something, it, it immobilizes and kills them. It, it's interesting when you find out, you know, there's the carnivorous plants, which will, of course, eat things that fall into their traps, like the Venus fly traps or the trumpet plants, right? Yeah. That have the acid and digestive juices at the bottom of the trumpet. But with the brambles, to me, it's it's frightening because it's a plant, number one, but it doesn't move in the way that a carnivorous plant does. It's not like it's trying to entice things into it, but if it catches a mammal like that and they have no means of getting out, particularly the sheep, yeah, well, the sheep dies and I suppose... It just drinks their blood. Mm -hmm. I have a... Uh... At some point, when we start doing tabletop RPGs for realsies, I have like a whole demigod that is just a murder bush. A murder bush? Yeah. A murder uh, bush. Specifically spawned out of a joke from the Shadow Tactics series, because you hide bodies in that game by dumping them off piers. Or putting in bushes. And putting them in bushes. And so I had one bush that I jammed like 40 bodies in at one point. Mm. And they would all just disappear and sink into the ground. And I'm like... There is clearly some kind of like divine being in that bush to justify how many corpses it can hold. And uh. so the entire point of it is is a a, uh, a bush that offers people boons if the, they bring them sacrifices. Does it just like grow a single fruit with each sacrifice given to it or something? Something like that. But yeah, you know, the more bodies that you cart back to this thing, the better the rewards. But the entire point is that it it is incentivizing the players to do maybe not necessarily heinous things, but kind of unthinkable things. I'm also thinking of, you know those trees that I like to step inside that have the openings? Yeah. Could you imagine if there was an opening, but it was a maw yeah. of some sort and you shove bodies into the murder tree? But the entire point is to some degree for like a regular, for regular players, if you knew that like if you killed something powerful, you could use its body for something and maybe you're in a gray area situation. Like, do you spare or slay the kind of morally gray warlord who's like doing bad things, but for the benefit of his people? Or feed it to the bush god. Yeah, you know, normally you're just kind of like, well, I'll spare them if they reform. But if you suddenly have this bush god that's like, hey, this guy is kind of a shithead. You know, he's an awful guy. I'll eat him and I'll give you something cool for it. All of a sudden there's a little bit more of a like, <laughs> maybe not. Because uh -oh. most most games you spare your enemies and they become allies or something. You're just thinking of this because you've been playing that Overlord game, right? A little bit. Because like at, at one point you like spare a slaver because he's getting medicine for his sister and he's doing all these terrible things just to cure her. And then, like, you spare him, and then one of the characters is just like, yeah, I'll go cure, cure your sister, no problem. Without, like, any of the stakes, any of the, like, build-up. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's easy enough. I can just cast, like, level 4 restore. It's I mean, fine. the sister may not have been aware of any of it happening. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. this guy was selling, like, going to war and selling people as slaves. Like, children. Uh -huh. Children. Just I to pay for this children. treatment. And you spare him so he... Uh, he can finally get his sister cured. And it just some part of it is like, no, cure the sister. Throw that guy in prison. Except now you want to throw him to a bush god that will devour his very being. Yeah. Terrible. But I, I think that's kind of the point of like, it would be an interesting character. And I was going to have like a couple of these like pseudo like divine beings that I like just sneak in to you give really you alternatives. Do you really want to go with a bush or would you rather have a tree? I think trees are cooler than bushes. Sorry, bushes. 
I don't know. Fight. I I just wanted it, I wanted it to be kind of like a bush bramble thing, because a tree is too cool and majestic. This is this is a. It needs to be thorny. Yes. Right. But the entire point of it is that it is an unambiguous entity. You know exactly what it's about. True neutral. Uh, Wait, are you saying that this thing is not in a grove? It's going to be just on the side of a road and only the protagonists know that it is a god? Yeah, or, yeah, to some what? degree that it is it is actively trying to influence their their actions because it has some kind of investment in what they are doing. Could you imagine being a bush god and a city is built up around you? Well, no, 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 like, no. Well, you would... I mean, presumably, it it it's not one location. It's, oh, it, it inhabits multiple bushes. Yeah, yeah, that they are just its avatars. Because normally you're used to, like, divine beings, avatars being, like, you know, some golden man or angel that comes out of nowhere. So there could be a waterfall god that just exists in any waterfall that there is? Potentially, yeah. Ah. I don't I, know. I see. It was an idea that I want to use at some point because I think it would be kind of cool. Because uh, deals with the devil in... in Tabletop RPGs, I think, are kind of underutilized and un uninteresting, or at least, you know, from what I've seen. I'd love to see, like, a campaign that is much more, like, give and take in a less exploitative manner. And usually they are a cool demon lord or a vampire. Yeah. Uh, like Dracula or something. But a bush. Yeah. That is... That's something else, I had to admit. Okay. You don't oh. reek of alcohol today. What's up? Because I didn't drink. I just want to stay sober today. Huh, what's gotten into you? I look pretty sad to miss out on a chance to drink. Oops, was it that noticeable? Well, today's a special day. The day I died and perished from this world. Really? What's the date again? It's hard to keep track of time staying here. The date doesn't really matter. It's this exact moment I'm commemorating. I learned all about the life and death of Giovanni, my first incarnation. That's what you meant, huh? You think the followers of the Church of Gears are a bunch of fools, Roland? You mean how they're so desperate to find meaning in their lives going so far as to join a cult? Nah, I don't think they're stupid. They're just pitiful. That's what I think too. I grew up without anyone to call parents. Same here. I was raised by my grandma. Had a rough childhood. I was born in a nest and got left in an orphanage without even knowing who my parents are. I'd have died already if I was the Backstreets. I was lucky to be born in a nest, and unlucky to have lost my parents so early. What nest was it? K-Corpse. That's one of the more decent ones I've heard. Yep, my life was pretty smooth. Slightly more unfortunate than others, and slightly luckier than others. Never really starved, or got bullied by anyone. It was a sheltered life, free from any outside influence. All I did was breathe in that shelter- breathe in the sh breathe in- All I did was breathe in that shelter without meaning. I thought it was the natural thing to do. Everyone had the same expression as mine. In the school or the streets, all the people in the nest made the same face. Lost focus, spacing out and staring into empty places. Uh-huh, you're spot on. I figured life just comes and goes. Kept living a monotonous life until I met someone with a face I'd never seen before. Oh, I'm guessing you met your first love? I suppose. It was Giovanni's first love, to be exact. She was giving a passionate speech in the middle of the street, even though no one paid any attention to her. I barely understood what she was saying, actually. All I could think about was how brilliant and alive a person could be. Love at first sight, eh? She went on about how she'll change the world and its people. And she was looking for recruits to join her cause. Isn't it funny? Who in the nest would want to give up their comfortable life for research like that, really? Yet you did. True. Maybe she went out, went out into the streets expecting to run into someone like Giovanni. Her name was Carmen. Carmen, huh? Whenever I saw Carmen brimming with joy and pride for her cause, I felt alive too. I wanted to stay with her forever. Though she probably just saw me as a good friend or a colleague and nothing more. Ah, the heart-rending agony of unrequited love. It didn't matter to me that much. I was content living on like that. But... Then tragedy befalls the research team, right? Yep, slowly. Progress of our research stagnated and Carmen gradually lost her liveliness. And then when a kid named Enoch died during an experiment, it was as if something within her snapped. I wanted to cheer her up somehow, but seeing Carmen's lethargic face scared me so much. It's like I was erased from the world. And Carmen ended her own life soon after that. That sure sounds tragic. Must have shocked you hard. 
I couldn't take I could take it somewhat well. I was actually pretty calm about it. I thought even the person who was more alive than anyone could meet such an early and miserable end. I decided to stay in the laboratory and help out with completing the research Carmen started. Her colleagues were still there, and they didn't lose hope just yet. Then one day, they said we might possibly be able to save Carmen. Tempting offer, wasn't it? It was, and I'm guessing it came at a price. It was a risky experiment. The subject could slip into a permanent coma if it went wrong. No one was willing to participate, so I volunteered to be the subject. Carmen coming back would have been the ideal outcome, but even if it failed, and I ended up sleeping forever, I was okay with that. In a world without Carmen, I lost my light anyway. So I can understand people taking desperate measures to find meaning in their lives, like the Church of Gears we recently saw. I participated in an experiment that could get me killed for a similar reason, and its result was... a failure, huh? Yep. And then I was given a second life, woke up in a lobot woke up in lobotomy corp as Netsack, even though I had already abandoned all attachment to life before I died. In the midst of confusion, I could hear a nostalgic voice, it told me to try and live on. After all those twists and turns, I finally got here. Now with the fearlessness to keep on living. That's a commendable spirit, Nets. Now I want to actually live, rather than just barely exist while doing nothing but breathe. If I get a chance to, that is. I'm starting to think it might actually be possible this time around. The world is bigger than I expected, and it has lots of hideous sides, but there's certainly a beauty to be found. I guess your drinking habit was a coping mechanism to get you through the day. Pretty much. I do enjoy alcohol for what it is, though. Same for me. Feel like a drink now, shall we? I'm all for it. Cheers for today. I do like the character growth across these. Mm -hmm. So, when hit, recover stagger resist. If the character isn't staggered, dice power plus one, reduce max stagger resist by 50%. Ouch. On a successful pierce attack, one thrill to the target. Against targets with three thrill, do bonus damage and stagger damage, then removes uh, stacks of thrill. It's actually pretty good. Anyway. Oh, that was kind of insane. The descriptions on those cards, the one it was, oh, first a prick was enough, but now they have to rub their whole body against the poppy plant. Ah. Yep. And the whole bursting. Now it's time for my head to burst. Good day. But yeah, I, th I think it is supposed to be just poppies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, odd punch time. Ah, singing machine. Oh the boy, singing machine. this asshole. <laughs> this is so hard to manage. All other music is nothing more than noise to me. Wait, is that the machine in the middle? Yeah, it is. You throw people in, and it makes a beautiful song. Ew. Uh, yeah, they throw people in into it just to hear the music. Just thinking about the employees who were charmed by that song gives me the heebie-jeebies. Mm -hmm. Don't let this music allure you. So, machine that sings cannot be targeted, does not act, takes no damage. On the scene after I crave that melody is activated, plays music using the character in the machine. The character takes damage equal to 30% of the max HP and is excluded from the battle for that scene. While the music is playing, all characters gain 5 strength and stagger damage resistances. Oh, and all stagger damage resistances change to fatal. Crave that melody, starting with the third scene, every four scenes, gain an extra speed die, and use a different set of combat pages. Staggered while this is active, puts the machine... gets put into the machine at the start of the next scene. Okay, so... <laughs> this could go badly for me. Uh, let's see. Okay, so what are, they, what are their die? Really bad, which I think is kind of the point. Okay. I do a... Oh, that... Mm, okay. I do an observe. And then a loosen up. I'm falling over the integral themes of this game. And what I'm getting at is... So, there's the whole dynamic of power and control and how people feel that they are powerless in their own lives, that they are serving the whims of higher beings. And that power, 
that powerlessness, that feeling of a lack of agency leads people to either become despondent or seek some kind of thrill in their life, whether it come from, I mean, regardless of whether or not it comes from a bad source. You understand what I mean? Yeah. But then also that some people learn that they can somewhat stay ahead and thrive by having others suffer. That's why we see all these people that are so willing to kill and exploit other people just so that they can get ahead, so that they can improve their own lives, even if it means the destruction of others. I, just looking at this machine and how it promises that it can make absolutely beautiful me melodies, but at the cost of other people. Yeah. literally their lives. I do brawl there. Not actually sure if I want to do brawl, but that's okay. It makes me wonder if anything in commerce or society is ever truly equitable. Is there always someone that comes out of a deal or an exchange with less than what they're deserved. Maybe. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. I I think there are a lot of equitable deals. Maybe, okay, here it is. Here's the music. It's kind of horrifying. It is kind of horrifying. I don't think that's music. That's just the sound of chopping and crunching flesh and bone. Okay. So if I do... Hmm. But, okay. Ooh. You know how we've discussed in the past how it seems as though there are more people profiting from being middlemen than actually being the laborer or the consumer. Yeah. Because the consumer has to take their own earned value, their, their own money, and pay for the things they want to consume. Correct? Yeah. So there's that. Obviously, they have different means of acquiring that money, but, you know, they pay an amount for a service or a, uh, a product. The creators, the people that, and workers that make those products, it depends on how far up or down the chain they are. Yeah. Because there are the people where, let's go say that you're buying a hand-knit sweater at a crafts fair. You know, you're going to be handing money directly to the person who made that sweater. And the person who made that sweater paid some of their own money to acquire the yarn that, and the tools that they used to make that sweater. But for the most part, what you're paying them is what they feel is needed to compensate them for the cost of the materials, but then also their time and then their skill and their craft. And how exclusive this sweater is. Maybe it's a unique design. Maybe it's, it's really out there and is Kind of, I, it's tied to them and their brand. Maybe it's exclusive to them. It's one of those things where, yeah, maybe that garners a little bit more of a price. But there are also, say, the workers in the factories, and they're the ones hand making the garments. The people that they're working for are the ones that acquired the machines and the tools and the fabric that they're using. So at that point, they're really only owed their labor, but the labor, like the cost of their labor is determined by the company, right? Yeah. So they're not really the ones setting the price. And so in other words, they're they're selling their, their time and their skill, but the skill isn't valued in the same way that an artisan's would be. Yeah. Or a, or a person that owns a particular IP or product that's exclusive to them. 
the, the people that work in the factories are making something for a larger entity. So the larger entity, it kind of comes in the way. Like Obviously they own the machines and they provide the materials and everything and the brand and the IP and whatnot. But when a consumer pays that company, not much of it's going to the worker. A lot of it's going to everyone else in the chain and in many companies just going to the heads, right? Yeah. Um, but then now we're, especially with social media and with marketplaces online and such, where they say, hey, crafters and creators, you can put your thing on our platform to get our audience and be part of this larger marketplace. But, you know, we get a cut of, of everything. For context, we're feeling particularly betrayed by most social media. YouTube kind of included. Yep. Wow, that was hilarious. Now that I understand how this group works, it's uh, kind of easy. Yeah, Ayo. so I suppose Oop. that long roundabout thing was just about how I feel like the people in this world are so listless and unfulfilled because they feel undervalued. Well, yeah. I mean, this entire thing, I, Library of Ruina and Lobotomy Corporation to a lesser degree is some of the best social commentary I've seen from a allegorical perspective. Because it really does cover the gamut, but... There's just so many instances in this where humans are literally a resource in the most visceral means. And I, I mean, I'm pretty being sure popped up some into meat patties and machines and using being used as thread in fabric. Yeah. I mean, some of it has to be the fact that the Korean culture might be even more extreme. But again, would have to leave in Korea to really talk about this. Um, but I know the work culture over there is brutal, so. I don't know. I, and I, I suppose one of the few other things I know is that gaming is huge there and that yes. particularly MMOs and such, I, I feel like in many of those situations, it's I love non-MMO Korean. I, I love non-MMO Korean games because they tend to be very insightful. Mm -hmm. I actually don't like Korean MMOs for the most part because they tend to be extremely grindy, mm. uh, very grindy, very like microtransaction heavy that I, I almost hate to say it, but uh, it feels like more work. Yeah, it feels like more work whenever I play a Korean MMO. I think that's true. Admittedly, you're grinding an awful lot in Guild Wars for some things. True. I'm definitely feeling it. Like, if we ever want to get a legendary weapon, oh boy. Oh, yeah. But I suppose that's the point. That's just kind of MMOs. But, like, some of the other ones feel worse. And I'd have to I'd have to play them to analyze it. But what was the one? Terra was the one that uh, I'm most reminded of. Um, I don't know how grindy it was. I thought was. it was Arc Age that was the one where if you're not keeping up your oh, property, yeah. they just oops. yeah, just take it away. I, I again, kind of almost no connection to these games. I played a couple of them back in the day, and I'm like, nope. And every once in a while, I look at one, and I'm like, why did people play this? But I guess people really like it. I don't know. Anyway, hey, oh, got your books. I'll just leave them here and go before Mr. Viper bites my ass. Who told you that? Told you what? What are we what are we gonna argue about this time? Mr. Viper. You referred to me as Viper just a moment ago. Well, I called you that because you like to spit venom at others with that sharp look. You know, there's one guy I used to know who's kinda like you. He was nicknamed the Viper. That's funny, I was also nicknamed as such a long time ago. Dun dun dun. See? People all think in similar ways. You're a bit milder than that guy though. Is that supposed to be a compliment or an insult? More of a compliment. In any case, you're upright at heart. There's a time where I'd pressure myself and others with a paranoidal obsession to order. Back in Lobotomy Corp? Correct. Back then, even a small mistake could lead to substantial casualties. Doesn't hurt to be strict when caution's needed. I wanted to remain level-headed at all times, tried to conceal all my emotions, even when I felt anger or sadness. So I treated others in a frigid manner under the pretext of rules and discipline. Uh, under the pretext of rules and discipline. Is that a hiccup? A uh, hiccup and a burp. <laughs> For goodness sake. What would that even be called? A hip burp? A hip burp? Uh, uh, help? Uh, 
A burp up? No, that would sound even worse. Burp up is when the baby pukes. <laughs> is that why you're being so cold to me as well? No, it's the opposite, in fact. I'm upset at your compliance with Angela precisely because I cannot stand to tolerate what we're doing with a cool head. In my first life, as a person named Gabriel, I wanted to make the world a better place. I wish technological advancement would bring comfort to people. But look at what we've gotten into. It's exploitation all the way down. In Lobotomy Corporation, we turned people into abnormalities and sacrificed even more people to the ac abnormalities, all to generate energy as part of our singularity. What are we doing? And what we're doing now isn't any less ruthless. For the sake of retrieving the light, we are killing people yet again and turning them into books, inflicting pain on others in favor of information. It's as if comfort can only be achieved through the agony of others in the city. Like I said, said Yasad, you're upright at heart. Though, no, or uptight at heart? No, upright. I don't really get why anyone would bother to care so much for others. I think the opposite, actually. Someone else must have benefited from all the trouble I went through, so it's only fair I get to make use of the conveniences that others suffered for. Ew. Yep. I, I really Roland hate that Roland is not logic. an admirable character. He, he represents complacency in the system. Mm-hmm. At least currently. I'm curious how, if and how he changes. Because I can't tell what Project Moon's goal with the writing is yet. I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of comments telling us one way or another. But it feels like Roland is kind of this, this honestly moron being confronted with a bunch of actual, like, positive change and turning his nose up on it because he's so dead to the world. Because he is effectively no different from all of the negative stereotypes we've found so far. It's just his response was to just roll over and accept life. Um... And he's found himself in this situation where he's kind of being offered means of change and improvement and isn't necessarily taking them. Which almost makes me wonder if Roland has an agenda beyond. Because either he's a generic and kind of stupid everyman uh, who will change at some point over the game. A generic and stupid everyman that is somehow supposed to be more enlightened than the others. Uh, which I would hate, so, you know, if it gets to the end of the game and everybody's like, yes, Roland, your wisdom of apathy is actually the correct path. <laughs> or he's secretly evil. And at some point, we're going to find out that he's like the, one of the colored fixers, like black or something, considering it matches his entire color scheme. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Anyway, it's very much like you to think so. Does that kind, kind of mindset truly ease your mind? Nothing I do nothing I can do about it anyway. That's that and this is this. Ugh. Still, I don't want to say your way of thinking is outright wrong or anything. You're right. Way too right. That doesn't vibe too well with me or the city. You must be thinking I'm pathetic like others do. You know, this is this difference between our mindsets might be what'll let you do things I couldn't dream of doing. To shake up the whole system, you need perseverance more than anything. And like I will give credit, like Roland does recognize that he himself is shitty. He's just saying he's not the one to do it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, great on you for being able to change things, but that's just not me. Who knows? You might actually create technologies that don't need sacrificing others to run someday, right? I've already endured for so long, and you're telling me to stay silent yet again. Just this once, man. Just one more time. Things could turn out differently this time around. And besides, some things did improve over your time in Lobotomy Corp, right? That is true. I can at least... Be with my former employees who have always been loyal to me. Yeah, what did I tell you? There's one improvement at least. Change up stuff one at a time like that and you can make a huge difference eventually. Don't force me to do the same though, since I'm totally not up for that. You're quite the foolhardy individual, aren't you? But you do have a point, Roland. Some things have gotten better, as you've said. I'll try and persevere as long as there are improvements to be made. Can I leave you with my share of persevering too? I suppose I'll have to consider that. See? You're just too nice. Angela would have instantly shut me down with bullshit. Turns out that conversing with you wasn't all too unpleasant, after all. Yep, I have my charm, you see. Let's drop the courtesy while we're at it. I'm more comfortable speaking this way. Eh, figured. Cheers, then. It's nice talking with you. Like, I will say again, at least it recognizes that Roland kinda sucks. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> 
Offensive dice gain extra power. Defensive dice roll one. Wait, art is a devil's gift born from despair and suffering, never stop performing until the body crumbles to dust? <laughs> that is not how art works. Like, yes, emotion is a factor, but I find that I do my best art when I'm happy. Oh, hey, we unlocked a new floor. And then sometimes angry, but uh, you don't want to live off of spite. Yep. Also, ooh, I, I kind of like that that diamond in the background. I don't know if it's yeah. trying to do the classical elements of wind, water, fire, and earth with the triangles. I think it is, actually. Yeah. It, it looks like it is. I'm pretty sure this is Tifereth's floor. Mm. Floor of natural sciences, huh? That's the fifth floor we're opening. The patron librarian is Tifereth. What's up with all these weird names? Hello, Tifereth. Are you there? Wow, she grew up. Oh gosh, what did Tifereth sound like? Well, she was a she was like this tall last time. Was like, she the child? She was the child. Oh, okay, I see. And was she the one with the twin brother? Yes. Oh. Uh, remember okay. how there was the the kid Enoch that died in the experiment? Oh. That was her twin brother, who died in the experiment, and they kind of resurrected a version of him with the machine, but he was because he was already more dead before. I'm not entirely sure the logic behind it, but effectively he wasn't all there as a machine version. Mm -hmm. And so they just kind of tried to make them uh, two parts of the same whole as opposed to two, two separate people. And it didn't quite work. Shut it. <laughs> I'm standing right in front of you. Where did you think you're looking? Uh, what? You're totally a kid. I'm actually a lot taller than I used to be, you know? Oh, compared to your past self in Lobotomy Corp? No. I mean, compared to my first life. I was an actual kid back then, but it looks like I woke up in an older body this time. I'm not sure if it was the library's power or Angela's thoughtfulness, but this body should be better suited for librarian work, so I'm cool with it either way. Although, if it actually took all the years I've lived into account, I'd have to look a bit older. Putting that aside, isn't it a little rude to punch someone you just met in the face? Uh Punch someone you just met in the face? Oh, that's what the Herc was? It was oh. giving me flashbacks. Well, it's because you were being such a clumsy dork. What's your name, anyways? Roland, previously a fixer, scraping the bottom of the barrel. Current status, helping Angela. I suppose you've already met the ones in the upper layer. Upper layer? I thought I was going up, not down. Right. It would be the lower floors this time around. Still, you get what I mean, so just roll with it. Sheesh, aren't you the sassy one? I'm Tifereth, in charge of the floor of natural sciences. I thought doing science required actual thinking, though. Oh, no you don't, you silly, silly little thing. You're pretty brisk with throwing punches, but it's not quite as quick... Uh, but it's not quite as quick as someone I used to know, eh? Oh, uh, just the hell... <sighs> Stop looking down on me, will you? I heard a lot of stuff about science in my past workplace, you know? Gonna take a quick screenshot of that to remember this one for a thumbnail. <laughs> I'm probably a lot older than you in actual age, too. What's the point of being older if that doesn't reflect your words and actions, a little miss? Hmm. How's Angela doing anyway? Curious as always. She almost feels like a child sometimes. That's understandable, I suppose. Angela lived her whole life in a basement, after all. Yeah, she said she never even got to see outside. I'm guessing you aren't holding some deep, deep-rooted deep grudge against her like the other librarians are. I roughly know what she went through. I thought she was just cruel, but... I could see some events of the past while I was asleep. I could also see things happening in the present, all the way down to the moment that you woke me up. So, I could understand Angela somewhat. I'm pretty much sure the librarians who are still asleep have to a grasp on what's going on as well. All have a grasp. All have a grasp. Yep. Though the idiots in the upper layer, I, I mean, the lower floors, still seem kind of confused. So you agree with Angela's choice? It depends on the one final choice that she'll make at the end of this. I'm willing to help her out for now, at least. Our primary goal is the same, all things considered. To complete the library? The light is the only true meaningful... Oh, the light... Wait, really? The light? Yep. Okay. The light is only truly meaningful if it shines for seven days straight. 
Boy, is it refreshing to meet an amicable librarian for once. All right, I'll make sure to bring some picture books next time as a bonus. Uh -huh. All right, and she comes pre-equipped with assistance. I like that yellow. I, d I do like that yellow. You know, yellow was always on the like the bottom of the barrel for favorite colors yeah. for a long time. It's but growing I've noticed on me. As I've gotten older, it's starting to grow on me. I've noticed that you've chosen yellow occasionally when we've played board games yeah. recently. I like more of the slight gold orange yellow mm -hmm. or kind of this gray version. I don't like it when it tinges on green, and I think that's my one problem with with yellow in general and green, is that the midpoint between yellow and green is kind of pukey. Wander doesn't like green. I don't like green much. I like blue greens. I can work with that. Teals and turquoises, like yeah, mm, teal that's cyans good. and turquoises. But like once yeah. you start getting into like past forest green, and even sometimes with forest green, it, it starts getting kind of. And I don't like it that much. I don't like working with it, and I don't like... I love green. Yeah. I love my olives and my sages. All right, we don't have any more books to burn. Did we only do one invitation today? We did. We had a lot of dialogue. All right, well, <laughs> one way or another, we'll see you on the next episode of Library of Ruina, where we will uh, maybe do these and maybe have a lot more dialogue. We will see. But for now, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.